Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romaine Basta, Caroline Hyde, Taylor Riggs counting you down to the closing bell. Here to help take us beyond the bell. It's our global simulcast, joined now by a roving Carol Masser and a roving Tim Senevic, live at the UBS Arena, bringing together our Bloomberg Television, Radio, and YouTube audiences. We'll get to the markets in a moment. Why, Carol, are you at the UBS Arena? All right, because it's opening up, the ribbon cutting today. Finally, the Islanders have a home base to play. They've been on the road for the beginning of the season. It's very soothing music. And I think that would amp up the music a little bit, right? <laughs> Look at yeah. your, yeah, well, Look we, at we thought we'd serenade you, Romaine. This is just for you, specifically. I am amazed they haven't rebranded this as a crypto name yet. Uh, Kudos to UBS for managing to keep it the UBS arena for now. Yeah. Tim, you got anything important to say? <laughs> I, I am having trouble hearing you, but what I'm telling you as far as what I saw in the markets today, I think it's a good reminder, Taylor, that COVID is not gone yet. I got to tell you, it does feel like COVID is gone for us here today. That's certainly the way that we're yeah. interacting with people, the way that we're seeing people, the way that they're talking about, you know, having uh, 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 hockey here tomorrow. But look what happened with airlines and cruises and uh, companies that consumers have to spend discretionary income on. Uh, lower, not just today, but over the last couple of weeks as well, Taylor. Yeah, really well said. And, you know, Caroline, it's so interesting what he talked about some of the COVID issues that we've been facing in Europe. I know that you've been keeping sort of abreast of those, but uh, some of those CDC headlines, it didn't really change the risk on sentiment here. You did get a sense that there was some defensiveness under play, but really hard to be paying attention to cases when the focus really should be on those hospitalizations and really what it means for this reopening. Yeah, we should point out airlines as a group down for a fourth straight day here. Let's get you caught up here uh, on the closing bells here uh, in New York. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is in the red here, down about 269 points or about seven tenths of a percent or so uh, here on the day. That's going to be down about one percent or so on a weekly basis. The S&P 500 going to finish the day in the red. It did poke into the green a little bit earlier, but now down about a tenth of a percent here. Uh, it's going to be up on a weekly basis by about three tenths of a percent. There's a the NASDAQ. We've been talking a lot about it today. That's your outperformer on the day, up about four tenths of a percent. Now in oversold conditions here. And a lot of people are going to look at that and overlay that with the Russell 2000, which is now uh, heading into, I should say, NASDAQ is in overbought conditions. Russell heading into oversold conditions and is down on the day here and on the week. Uh, interesting moves. And I think it kind of tells you where investors' mindsets are at. Yeah, lowest since October 29th for the Russell 2000. And this really is a focus on sentiment, a focus on the fact that maybe this reopening trade isn't going to take off in the way many people had hoped. People starting to get a little bit cautious. They eye numbers coming from Europe when it comes to COVID and wanting the protection of big tech. Yeah, you certainly see that under play here, Caroline, as we take a look, as we always do for our radio audience, with some of the sector winners, some of the sector losers, some of the sector winners, it is technology. Caroline, like you said, you're up 1.2%. It is semiconductor, some of the semiconductor equipment. We've heard some of the positive comments from Micron, for example, despite some concerns from AMAT yesterday. Auto components and auto companies are still up in the lead, about 2.3%. How much of that, though, is sort of a bond story? Dare I go there, Caroline, as we think about some of the losers on the screen? What is off more than 1%, it's some of the hardware and the equipment, but it's banks and it's energy. It seems to be, at least for today, just a little bit of an unwind of some of that cyclical inflationary trade. And we should point out, too, just some of you hit some of the individual names, but you got into it, Micron. Those are your leaders in the S&P 500 on this day. A lot of those, of course, uh, uh, names in the energy sector are lower. Devon Energy, that's your big decliner. And we got to mention the banks. JP Morgan mm -hmm. uh, having a phenomenal losing streak. This is the longest losing streak we've seen for JP Morgan going back to 1988. Nine straight days here. Nine straight days. That's as we see bond yields, of course, push lower. Some of the banks can't catch a bid when that's the sort of forces they're working against. But we're also looking at a cross asset story that shows some risk aversion here. When you're looking at your FX vertical, it is basically red across your screens, all apart from that Bloomberg dollar index, which is currently up four tenths of a percent. When the dollar is back at a one year high, we're worried about the virus. We're, of course, seeking out those sorts of havens. It was notable that the Japanese yen was really the only other key G10 currency that was outperforming another key haven trade. Meanwhile, I mean, what is going on with milk? It's at the top of your yeah, screens when it comes to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always fail to actually find anything that's particularly on the, uh, on the terminal to tell me why but I mean let's call it supply chain issues shall but, we say inflationary pressures whatever it is that's certainly going to be eating into your grocery store well at some point you have to do a whole segment on milk yes. and really look at a long-term chart and I'll give you a reason why it's at the top of your screen it's been going up Caroline yeah is it our what'd you miss 
for you know, I don't a, know. Whole, a whole 30 minutes uh, on milk. I find, I, feed a, I find the key headline Here American cows are making less milk as farmers cut back on their feed. They have it. What is about the supply chain? Wow. I told you it was supply chain. So mean. Supply Not chain affects everything. The cows. You, only, you only get this stuff right here on Beyond the Bell. How is that oat juicing? I don't know. Are Carol and Tim, what, what happened? Did we just jettison them <laughs> off? Or are they out skating we're, we're on the ice? Some, yeah, some arena yeah. Uh, sound There was a lot of noise. Cues mm. there. Yeah. So we're just going to take it over for now while we yeah. uh, sort of figure out maybe what's Hopefully going on back. there. You see they have those big microphones. Are they calling the game? Yeah, it it kind of looked <laughs> like okay, it, I wasn't right? Quite, quite clear <laughs> Let's take a look at where we are on the weekly yields. And you guys, this was a week, I hate to say it, bond price higher, yield lower all across the board. We started the week at a 161 on 10 down to a 154 on 30s 2% we're down to a 191 so remain you're really coming down on the week when you think about some of the risk off feelings that we've had and dare I say there were a lot of headlines I'm just going to bring up a few from um, Rich Clarida that we got over at the Fed and saying it might be appropriate in December to discuss the tapering mm. pace do yeah. we need to increase some of the tapering paces that we've been seeing given some of the data as of late yeah, and I mean, some. some but he's not going to be vice chair for that much well, longer. That, that, that's, a, that's a good point. In fact, a lot of the commentary we're hearing lately, unfortunately, is from people who may not necessarily have a say in the matter as we get into next year. And of course, we're still sort of on Biden watch here yeah. to see if they finally make an announcement about renominating Powell or going in another direction, presumably with Lil Brainerd. And I think we're going to have a good conversation with Jared Bernstein uh, yes, in about 20 yeah. minutes from now for, for yeah. the TV audience. I think one of the key questions that Michael McKee has been bringing up is why wait so long? Given, of course, how slow the Senate moves, why did we wait until the last minute when you don't want a Fed without some of these positions filled really early into next year? Yeah, it leaves the market with anxiety, with a lack of clarity, uncertainty as to we, we navigate unprecedented times. That's an overused phrase, I realize, but it currently is that. And we st still also bring it back to once again fears whether it comes to covid and indeed carol i mean you're out there at the moment in the field trying to experience from a micro level yeah what it's like oh, to be are. weathering what are covid issues on one side but the desire to get out there and celebrate on the other yeah, and this is what this place is all about. They have uh, structured it so it's about experiences, people being in large open facilities where they can gather. They're getting ready for Harry Styles to do a concert here. I mean, people are coming back. What's interesting, we talked with uh, Tim, <laughs> come on, Tim Lewecki, who was uh, crucial in developing this and helping fund it, privately funding this, you know, mentioned that, man, if they had waited a little bit, they had some supply chain troubles as they were putting it together, but if they'd waited a little bit, the cause of it probably would have gone gotten up because of inflation specifically. Well, so I, I am all of these are playing out in, in real life. I, I'm curious. So I mean, this is yeah. basically for those who don't know, this is basically going to be the home of the New York Islanders uh, hockey team, which they used yeah. to be based out there in Long Island. And then they moved to Brooklyn for some period of time. And then everybody on Long Island complained about going to Brooklyn to watch a hockey game. So now they're back in Long Island. Is that is that right? That's right. They actually haven't had a home, a real home, uh, since the Coliseum. So they've kind of been uh, uh, without a permanent home for just a few years. So the fans certainly have been patient. Uh, and look, we spoke to the co-owner of the team earlier today. He said that he actually went around for the past few years speaking uh, to hundreds of fans at games in order Styles? to yeah, understand that what they actually back. wanted <laughs> in a new arena. Hey, we're getting ready for a concert here, I guess. It's Friday, everybody. They're Can you rocking feel out. It? They are rocking Harry out. Harry Styles over. performing tonight? No. Not tonight. Not tonight. Who Soon. <laughs> No, it's all about sports, and then it's all about Harry Styles' I have so outfits. many questions, and they never so many ask questions. questions. Who's performing tonight? Because it's not the Islanders, right? Because they, wouldn't, you know be, more they than wouldn't be warming up on base. We need Scarlett Foo. She's the ice hockey There's expert There's so many questions. So They're many talking, questions. and I don't hear them ice. <laughs> Meanwhile, I mean... I think we need to call it quits on this Friday. It's been a lot of fun having Carol oh, and Tim uh, out there at the UBS that was our arena. Final play, everyone. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the warm up acts. Enjoy the music, Carol and Tim. We're going to miss them. Meanwhile, of course, we're going to do it all once again on Monday with our Beyond the Bell segment.